Good morning. Um, I'd like to welcome you all to um, this morning session about eye gaze. And uh, let us welcome our first speaker, Michael Huang. Um, Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you all for coming here, and thank you, Valina, for the introduction. And our paper is about uh, building a personalized auto calibrating eye tracker from the user interactions. And I'm Michael, a last year PhD student, and this work was done in the Kai Lab at Hong Kong Polytechnic University. And these are my uh, dear colleagues. Okay. I don't think anybody here needs an introduction into the eye tracking or what it is useful for. And these are some examples. Some of the most accurate eye tracker nowadays are wearable device. Some are screen based. They can be very precise and accurate, but often too expensive. So it is not likely that the average customer would own one of these. Therefore, currently, the gaze research is mostly used for the lab studies. Our motivation for this paper is building an accurate webcam-based eye tracker. If we can do that, the gaze-aware studies can take place in situ, and the gaze-aware application will be possible for everybody. But what is our key challenges? The biggest challenge here is the data. The data from the specialized device is extremely different from that of the webcam. This is a sample image captured by an infrared camera. The important eye feature here are so clear that it's much easier to do the accurate eye gaze checking and gaze estimation. In contrast, the sample from webcam is of much lower quality and is much noisier. And in real use situation, we also need to handle the issues of occlusions, refractions, and head post variance. So basically, if you want to build a gaze tracker from the webcam data, we need to be able to handle different shapes, textures, angles, with different head orientations, head to screen distances, and under different illumination conditions. That means we need a huge amount of data to get a well-performing eye tracker. The, the big question is that, um, how can we get such amount of data in a feasible manner without requiring the user to go through a lot of calibration? So this is what we thought. Nowadays, webcams are everywhere. And practically every computer system comes with a camera. People spend a lot of time on the computers. And this means there is a lot of interaction data that generated every single day. Based on our observation in a pilot study, there seems to be a strong correlation between the gaze and interaction cue, i.e. the location of typing carrot or the mouse cursor. This brings us to the question can we use the mouse clicks and key presses that the computer collects? Previous work give, some, give us some comforting information. On the supporting side, Warden and his colleague report a strong gaze cursor alignment during the active mouse usage, such as uh, using the mouse to follow the eye movement or to mark a particular result. Sugano and his colleague built an eye tracker using the mouse click based on the assumption that the user are looking at where they click. On the minus side, Huang and his colleagues report that yes, there is a certain correlation between gaze and cursor, but substantial variation also exists depending on the time spent on the page, personal browsing habit, and the current cursor behavior. Similarly, Liebling and his colleague report that gaze does lead the mouse, but the gaze-mouse coordination is very complex in the real-life scenarios. And this suggests that if you want to make use of the interaction data to build an eye tracker, we need to understand when the mouse and the gaze, or the interaction and the gaze are actually aligned spatially and temporally. 
previous work shows and also common sense tell us there may be many factors that complicating the uh, assumption that the user are looking at where they click or type. The question is how? How do this factor affect the gaze interaction consistency? We ran an experiment to find out. We recruited 31 subjects. Their gaze position were recorded using an eye, uh, Toby eye tracker and their facial image by a webcam. And we asked them to perform some everyday interaction tasks, such as clicking on long links, short links, and photo links. Uh, yes, I intended to stay on this page for a little bit longer because it's just killed. <laughs> and we also asked them to highlight the text with mouse drags and type. What we want to find is the probability of the distance between the gaze interaction location, uh, which means, I mean, the distance between the gaze location and the interactional cute that is less, less than 60 pixels, which means they are uh, well aligned. So this is the moment of the interaction happens. The x-axis shows the time in seconds preceding the event. And we can see that the likelihood of the gaze interaction alignment peaks at different moments across different activities. This means that the user is not always looking at where they click or type. But this is only the overall probability max function. Let's look into the distribution of all the instances. Again, x-axis shows the time preceding the interaction event. Y-axis shows the distance between the gaze and the interaction. The green line shows the median. The blue region shows the data from 25th to 75th percentile, and the gray region from 1st and 99th percentile. The red points indicate the outliers. We can see that the gaze interaction distance at the event moment can be very large, reaching 1,000 pixels here. And that is basically two-thirds of our screen width. So this result tells us that Although the user are generally looking at where they click or type, there is much variation exists across individual events. But why does this happen? This simple cartoon may illustrate a possibility. By the time that the user actually click on a target, their gaze may already have been lured by something else. And the, pon uh, the panic monster in this case. So if you are going to use the interaction queue for eye gaze learning, we need to identify the moment of the highest gaze interaction alignment. And to look for this alignment, the key is to identify the fixation and smooth pursuit, which suggests that the user is focusing on some target just before the interaction happens. This is an example. The x-axis shows the time, the y-axis shows the eye position. As time goes on, we see there is a one fixation, one cigar to another location. Then there is a small pursuit when the user is probably reading a line, followed it by another card. And this is when the mouse event happens. And this is the moment of the highest gaze and interaction alignment. Therefore, this is what we want to identify, the period of the small pursuit in this case. And we need to do this automatically and from the image, uh, the webcam images. We use a behavior informed validation to look for the temporal reliability of the training instances. What we want to do is to find the stationary periods that correspond to the fixation or smooth pursuit, uh, smooth pursuit in a three-second window preceding an event. First, we consider each feature separately and identify the candidate sequence with only small temporal change. Then we look at all the features together. If there is a common candidate sequence that spans all across the features, then that is our stationary period. 
the point of the highest gaze interaction alignment is defined as the last frame of the stationary period. And we construct the gaze feature vector at the moment of the alignment. Our behavior informed validation ensures that the user's gaze is stable. But what if the user isn't even looking at the interaction queue at all? Here is an example. The user is watching a YouTube video, and the heat map shows the gaze location. The mouse is positioned on a pause button and try to capture a screen. Obviously, the mouse target is in the gaze point, but our behavior informed the validation doesn't know that. We therefore add a data-driven validation to address this situation by verifying the spatial reliability of the training instances. Using the feature vector extracted by the behavior informed validation, we can, act, we can calculate or estimate this uh, predicted gaze point. And if this gaze point is too far from the interaction event, then this instance will be classified as potential bad data, which will not be used to update the next gaze model. So how well does it work? We ran an experiment using the Toby eye tracker as gold standard. The yellow dashed line here shows the true gaze trajectory. The red dot corresponds to the location of gaze at the click moment. So this is the performance we get with the naive method. The blue dot corresponds to the shortest distance between the gaze and the click. So this is the absolute lower bound, the best performance that we could possibly get. The green dot corresponds to the moment of the highest gaze interaction alignment as identified by our validation mechanism. We can see that our method does significantly better than simply using the naive people are looking at where they click or type assumption. But how well does it work in a real use context? We recruited 10 subjects for a focus study they were asked to work on several applications that will generate diverse range of uh, interaction behaviors, such as uh, browsing, coding, writing, drawing, and gaming. Our gaze model is a random forest. And this is the performance of our gaze model. If we use the naive people are looking at uh, where they click assumption, the gaze model is updated and retrained it every 150 interaction events. The figures here on the left side shows the correlation coefficient between the ground truth and the predicted uh, xy gaze coordinates. And the figure on the right side shows the visual error in degrees. From these results, we can conclude that the chaining on the data at the event moment or meaning that the data extracted using the naive method fails to improve the performance. And this is the performance of our gaze model if we fit it only the data that has been validated by our process. In other words, this gaze model is trained using the aligned moment. We can see that the correlation is a lot higher and the visual error is much lower, even better, we can see that the correlation goes up and the visual error decreases over time, meaning that as we get more data, the better the model is. Our result is competitive with those of the best performance system, but unlike theirs, our method is completely non-intrusive to the user. So for future works, we plan to take into account of the impacts of human effect we also plan to investigate the method to accelerate the gaze learning process, as this is, this is currently uh, our major limitation. In summary, we conduct a user's behavior study to investigate the gaze interaction consistency across different interactions. And we propose a non-intrusive, adaptive, interaction-informed method that to identify the gaze interaction alignment from the daily human-computer interactions. We also show that our method is effective across diverse interactive tasks. Uh, 
Uh, okay, I think that's it. Thank you for your attention, and I'm happy to take any questions. Hi, um, Melo Dividal from Filmic Labs. Thank you very much for uh, the presentation. I particularly enjoyed the copious amounts of cats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> um, I'm just wondering if you have ideas of applications of what to do once you have the gaze of the user, because you're using you know, mouse and keyboard. So what do you plan on using uh, the calibrated gaze for? We want, to, um, we want to have a better understanding about the human behavior. So we try to investigate how, uh, this channel to understand the eye gaze or maybe facial expression only using the off-the-shelf devices, such as, the, as you say, the webcam and keyboard mouse. So we hope that our, uh, our, our program can be distributed uh, in a, on a very large scale, and then we can understand people uh, in, uh, interact with the computer in different tasks. So okay, so for usability purposes. And yeah, okay. yeah. Thank, thank you for your question. Shumin Jai, Google. Uh, somewhat following the last question, um, I view this as one of the major uh, progresses in, in the uh, eye tracking industry. Um, I wonder, uh, from your experience, given what you have achieved, how close it is to apply such techniques to something like magic pointing for real? Yeah, thank you for your question. That is exactly what we uh, hope to do for the, the, for the uh, next try, because uh, the magic cube is also uh, very interesting and useful, especially when there is multiple uh, display. And our current limitation of applying this in the build user situation is the process that we build up this uh, user dependent model. Because as our uh, data shows, it requires around like 1,050 data points to train a well performing model. And this data point usually come from the interaction data, for example, the mouse click and key press. For key press, it would be okay because the key press comes a lot faster. But most of the time, uh, the reliability of, key, uh, of mouse click is better than key press. So to collect enough good data, it takes a long time. And that is our current biggest limitation compared to the commercial products. Because, for example, using the infrared camera, we probably just only need a few seconds to do the calibration. So can't mm -hmm. you um, default your training to some uh, group previously trained data before you do the adaptation to individual? So you still have a good, reasonable, good start? Oh, that's fundamentally not what works in your view in terms of personalized training. We are very interested in how to make use of the existing data from different users. But currently, yeah, this paper's focus is uh, only the user-dependent model. And we are actually working on something uh, based on that kind of idea to accelerate the process. And yeah, thank you. Thank you. Very short question, Evgeny Abdulin, Texas State University. So, uh, actually, we have uh, we also have uh, Toby Ix in our laboratory, <coughs> okay. and uh, I'd like to ask uh, uh, with your plot uh, of the distance of the visual angle between the target, at the one of the last plot in the right top corner now. Yeah, so it's uh, two point uh, five degrees in the end, but uh, Toby Ix has a accuracy something about one degree uh, and the precision uh, something about the half a degree. How this uh, data will, will, take, will take into account in your research? You, you mean uh, our math, the performance of our method compared to the no, Toby? How, how it, uh, you take into account the uh, years that can be induced by the equipment by Toby X in I see, I see. Uh, you mean when we use Toby as ground truth? the yes. noise that introduced to our analysis. Yeah, uh, that is one of the concerns that uh, we run this experiment. Yeah, thank you for uh, your question. We actually uh, have also concerned about that. So in, uh, in the future study, we probably just uh, uh, spend more time in the evaluation part. We probably requ uh, require the subject to gaze at the calibration point uh, using the mo most traditional way to do that evaluation. Yeah, just maybe uh, in inducing the confidence intervals uh, can help you in this case. Uh, so you, you just yeah, have sure. an idea. 
Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your question. So this paper also received um, Best Paper Award, so congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.